Hello, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I am going to discuss an algorithm for replacing the text of a bookmark in OpenXML Word Processing ML. In a previous screencast, I showed how to retrieve the text of a bookmark. In that screencast, I discussed an approach that I called flattening the paragraphs. What this involves is transforming the word processing ML of a document into another form, actually an invalid form of word processing ML, but that invalid form is easier to query. It's in a form that is easier to retrieve just the text of the bookmark. If you haven't viewed that screencast, I recommend that you go watch it first. I'm not going to walk through the idea and the semantics of flattening paragraphs in this screencast. I'm going to assume that you know what I mean when I talk about flattening paragraphs. You can find that screencast here. As I mentioned in this screencast, I'm going to show how to replace the text of a bookmark. For those of you who are experienced OpenXML developers, you probably know that Instead of bookmarks, it's actually often better to use content controls to delineate text within a document. However, there are good reasons to use bookmarks instead of content controls. If, for instance, you have a very non-technical user base, and this user base is comfortable with creating a bookmark in a document, but not so comfortable with enabling the developer tab, selecting text and inserting content controls and setting properties on content controls, then you might want to use bookmarks for a simple solution where you need to enable the users to specify regions of a document that will get replaced with some other content. Let's just dive into some code and start talking about the algorithm. In the code that you can download in the blog post associated with the screencast, you'll find this get bookmark text method. This is the method that I walked through in detail in the screencast that is the predecessor to this screencast. It's not a very long method. Here is the entire method. Also in that screencast, I discussed the transform to flatten the paragraphs. Here is the entire method to flatten those paragraphs. I'm using this code to flatten the paragraphs verbatim from that previous screencast. The strategy that we're going to take here is that we're going to flatten the paragraphs. Then having flattened the paragraphs, we can easily go in and find the exact runs that we need to replace and replace those runs with new content. Then, having replaced those runs with new content, we can unflatten those paragraphs and basically put the document back into a valid form for an OpenXML document. Let's start walking through this process and seeing how this all happens. First thing I want to discuss are some limitations of this code to replace the text of a bookmark. There are a number of circumstances where you can create bookmarks in a document, but it doesn't necessarily make sense to replace the text in those bookmarks. I'm going to iterate through all of these scenarios and just mention what isn't supported. First of all, replacing the text of a bookmark that is in a math formula, that's not supported. That's probably something that no one would ever really want to do. You wouldn't want to be automatically updating formulas in a word processing document, or if you do, you have a very edge case scenario. What's far more common is that the end user will want to select the company name and indicate that that is the company name so that it can be replaced with some different company name or some such relatively simple scenario like that. Next point is that this code doesn't support replacing text in a document that has tracked revisions. Tracked revisions make a document significantly more complicated to process. In general, other than first removing tracked revisions, I don't write code to process documents that have tracked revisions. It's really problematic to write such code and to make it work 
properly in all the edge cases. However, it is very doable to first accept all tracked revisions and then further process the document. The next limitation is that the document cannot contain content controls. You can certainly have a bookmark that starts in the middle of a content control and ends outside the content control or starts outside a content control and ends inside of a content control. I debated about this particular limitation, but it significantly complicates the processing if the code needs to be prepared to handle content controls. And if someone is using this approach of replacing text of bookmarks, most likely they are not using content controls, which is a far more sophisticated approach to accomplishing the same thing. The next step in this process of replacing the bookmark text is that the code flattens the paragraphs. I do this here because some of the remaining checks are accomplished much more efficiently if we first flatten the paragraphs. The code then retrieves the start bookmark element and the end bookmark element. The next limitation is that this code won't work if either the start or end bookmark is in the middle of a hyperlink. Replacing bookmarks in the middle of a hyperlink, that's probably not the real usage scenario for this code. It would be possible to handle this case, but it's analogous to handling the case of content controls. It makes the code significantly more complicated and for not a lot of benefit. The code also doesn't allow for bookmarks that are in the middle of a simple field and also doesn't allow for bookmarks that are in smart tags. At the end of all of this, the code then determines and validates that the start bookmark element and the end bookmark element now have the same parent. If they don't, then this means the bookmark started in the middle of a table and ended outside the table. Again, these aren't really the usage scenarios that we're targeting with this code. We're targeting a pretty simple scenario where non-technical end users want to go into a document, tag some things with some bookmarks, and then run a process that replaces the text of those bookmarks. All of these checks are in this code just to make sure that the code doesn't create corrupted documents. As with the code that retrieves the text of a bookmark, the next thing that the code does here is retrieves the set of elements between the bookmarks. The next thing that the code does is it creates a collection of the elements that will become the child elements of the parent of the bookmark elements. In other words, the code will create a collection of elements that includes the bookmark start and bookmark end elements. The code notes where the replacement text will go by inserting an element in a custom namespace. This code uses the approach of sequentially using the concat extension method. What you can do is you can write one query, concat it to another query, concat that to another query, and at the end you're going to get one long list of elements that contain the results of each of those successive queries. The first set are all of the elements up to the start bookmark element. That's concatenated now with an array that's initialized right here in line. This array is comprised of the start bookmark element followed by this element here that's in a custom namespace that I've defined just for the purposes of this transform. This code goes to the first run that is between the bookmarks and grabs the run properties out of that run and puts those run properties as a child of this insert element. The transform is going to want those run properties later on when it reconstructs a run. The reason that I use this custom insert element here rather than just creating a run here is that there are a number of scenarios where after the transform we can't insert a run at that point. There has to be a paragraph around that run and I'll show you how I handle that situation. In almost all cases eventually just a run will be inserted. However, there are cases where a run isn't valid so 
need to insert a paragraph surrounding the run. And we don't know whether we need to insert the paragraph surrounding the run until after we unflatten the paragraphs. That's the key point here. Then we concatenate and pull in all of the elements between the bookmarks where the elements are not the paragraph, run, or table elements. So this pulls in any additional other bookmarks, comment start and end, other types of markup that we want to preserve after this transform. Then it concatenates a new array with a single element with the end bookmark element in it. And then finally, it grabs the elements after the end bookmark and concatenates those onto the collection. At the end of this statement, new elements contains a collection of elements that will replace the collection of elements that contain the bookmark start and bookmark end elements. And what this code does down here is it goes to the parent element and it replaces those nodes. The next thing that this code does is it unflattens the paragraphs. Unflattening the paragraphs accomplishes exactly the reverse of flattening the paragraphs. That is, all of the runs are then again placed as child elements of the paragraph to which they belong. Now, once having unflattened all of the paragraphs, the code's ready to go in and replace the insert element with a new run that contains the replacement text. This replace insert element is a recursive transform that does that. Let's go look at that. And here is the entirety of the replace insert element transform. This code looks for that special insert element. If it sees that special insert element, then it looks to see if the special insert element has a parent of body or cell or txbx content. If it does, then it creates a new paragraph that then contains the run that contains the replacement text. This is going to be a relatively rare circumstance, but it's important and needs to be handled so that we make sure that we don't write code that can create an invalid document. And finally down here, if that special insert element was not a child of a body, cell, or txbx content, which is going to be the most common case, then it just creates a new run. It grabs the run properties from that insert element that we stashed away as a child of that insert element and then creates a new text element with the text that was passed into the method. This is the replacement text. There is one final edge case that needs to be handled. There is a scenario where the bookmark could start in the middle of the last paragraph before a table and end after the last paragraph of the table. In other words, the paragraph glyph is going to be deleted when the code replaces all of the nodes between the bookmark start and end. And this leaves some effectively orphan runs that are children of the body element. This is really an edge case. However, it's important to handle. So what I did to make this code so that it would not create an invalid document is that if that circumstance happens, it just creates a new paragraph and puts those runs in a new paragraph. As I stated, really what's going to most commonly occur is that the user is going to select just a little bit of text in this paragraph and in that paragraph and give them different bookmark names. That's going to be the most common scenario, but I saw that this could happen, so I protected against it. Whatever else, we don't want to write code that will create an invalid document. And at the end of this, it replaces the X document in the main document part. And that's all there is to the code. Let's look at a few examples. Here, we replace a bookmark with the name of A with the text of ABC. I'll go to the bookmark A. We can see it 
comprises the entire text of the insert. After running the code, it should say on ABC tab. Let's run the code. Now let's look at the results of running the code and it is what we expected. Let's look at the second one. The second one looks for bookmark B and replaces bookmark B with nothing. And we can see that bookmark B starts in the middle of the first paragraph and ends in the middle of the second paragraph. After replacing the text of that bookmark with nothing, the text of the document will say, this is the second paragraph. And that's what we see. By the way, we can still go to that bookmark B. It's now just an insertion point. The third test looks for bookmark C and replaces it with the text of XYZ. And this tests the scenario where the bookmark start starts before a paragraph and it ends after the glyph of that paragraph. And the default behavior of the code that I present here is that it creates a new run and the new run is joined together with the following paragraph. And what we see is this where that XYZ is prepended to the second paragraph. There are a number of different behaviors that you could define for this scenario. You could define that it would insert a new paragraph. You could define that you could pass in the formatting for that new paragraph. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. In test number four, it's going to find the bookmark ABC and replace the text with was a Here is the text of the existing bookmark. Key point about this is that the I here is bolded. And if you'll recall, when we walked through the code, when the new run that contains the replacement text is fabricated, it is formatted with the run formatting of the first run within the original bookmark. Let's look at the results of that. And we can see that, in fact, the replacement text is bolded. Test number five and test number six test to make sure that it is throwing errors in a couple of situations. Test number seven tests another edge case. We don't have to go into it in this screencast. Well, if you've made it through to this point in the screencast, I congratulate you. And that's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. Thanks for watching.